Shalom brothers and sisters. This is Sister Kana and welcome to another edition of COI Times, Children of Israel Times in the Days of Prophecy. Okay, my first article, um, I went into the uprisings in the Middle East and we know that um, a lot of the Western countries and mainly America is behind um, uh, a lot of what's going on in the Middle East and the uprisings. They seem to have used um, the internet uh, via Facebook and Twitter and a lot of other sites to, that have um, millions of viewers to start um, these protests in which we see today. But we also understand that the Most High has poured out His Spirit and so He has used, these, um, used America and the Western world because we know what time we're in in prophecy. I wanted to go into the book of Daniel because it shows um, where we are right now in prophecy. Um, Daniel 11.40 states that at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at, the king, push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. He will enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. So we see that this is actually happening right now. So what we must do is discern and um, determine who the king of the north is and who the king of the south is. And from my perspective, it's in, it always occurred to me that America was acting as the king of the north. Not only because it's, it's the superpower and, and we're in the last times, but just a lot of the attributes were because they were always pushing their authority on everyone. And we see that as um, these countries are overthrown, how that these military crews are basically behind the overthrown of Egypt, Libya, um, with Syria, and um, Sudan, Yemen, all of them started, you know, if you listen to the news, through Facebook, and um, the Western worlds are basically behind these things. So if we pay attention, we can actually see the hand that, that is controlling everything. And the Bible um, prophesied this to the T. So the prophecies are going right as planned as the Most High said it would. And of course we knew it would, right? <laughs> okay, so going into Daniel 11 and 41, He shall enter into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these... But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom, Moab, and the chief children of Ammon. And although this prophecy has not been yet fulfilled, we know that um, the country of Jordan is not really being affected, and it's right in the middle of everything. And, but we know that this will too come to pass, because the Bible is true. Um, he shall stretch forth his hand, this is Daniel 11 and 42, and um, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Now this prophecy we have watched with our very eyes have come to pass. Egypt is now overthrown. Um, Daniel 11 and 43 said, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Now we know that um, America and the western worlds own Egypt. Um, all the precious monuments and um, treasures are in different countries like Italy in the museums and um, you know you can go to these countries and actually see the precious um, gold and silver statues and things that are that belong actually to Egypt so already um, the, you know we already own those you know we I'm saying the nation our nation America and the Western world we already own, own the things of Egypt and their precious gold and silver and now we're actually going into Libya to take their precious you know their precious commodities which is gold and silver and oil and it says e Ethiopians should be at their steps so I had to go into that because um, modern what's going on in Sudan is very important Sudan is about to be um, split, which it is already happening. But America is talking about going into Sudan. So when you look in the Bible times, Ethiopia, Sudan was considered Ethiopia. Ethiopia was much bigger. So that prophecy would fit perfectly if, if they 
are intending to go into Sudan. The humanitarian situation in the Sudanese state of southern Kordofan is deteriorating. Heavy fighting broke out there a week ago, causing an estimated 40,000 civilians to leave their homes. The United Nations has begun to pull non-essential staff from the region and has brought in extra peacekeepers to try and stabilize the area. But the number of displaced people is growing every day, says Hua Zhang, director of public information for UNMIS, the UN's mission in Sudan. In a situation like this, with thousands of thousands of displaced because of the fighting, peacekeepers face yet another challenging task, and that's, that is to protect the civilians. We are trying our very best, but our military strength is stretching to its limit. But it says in Daniel 11 and 44, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with a great fury to destroy and utterly to make what take, make away many. So there's going to be some information that this superpower, the king of the north, with, which to my understanding is America, is going to receive that's going to stop them from actually going into Sudan. Now, they're talking about going into Sudan and maybe they will go into it but they probably won't finish the job because there's going to be some information they received out of um, the east and the north that will make them um, turn and go the other way. Now what will that information be? Who knows? Right now we, we are getting um, conflicting information from China and Russia in regards to NATO. They're um, actually turning a different turn so that could be something that makes them um, you know, America stop what they're doing after um, they take over Libya. Um, which brings me into my next story. The next story is, um, will, where, will the beginning of World War III, will it be in Syria? And the reason why I wanted to write about that is because I saw an interesting interview the other day. Um, one of this um, Syrian troops. He's an ex-police officer who defected. He was at the border of Turkey um, and being interviewed and he, he, he stated that a lot of the Iranian troops were already in Syria. That at the beginning of the uprising, Iran had sent their army into Syria and they were doing a lot of the military force and he defected because he refused to shoot at the civilians. And so he just um, gave his pink slip and he left. So that is very interesting because we know in the Bible states that America, w um, that Iran will be responsible of um, taking, out of, um, taking out America. And if that's true then, that's maybe the reason why America is not so quick to go into Syria. Now we can see the bloodshed in Syria far exceeds what has gone on in Libya, but yet it seems that America and NATO feel that there's no need to intervene. Why is that? Is it because that Iran is already in Syria? And if America intervenes in Syria affairs, that that will be the beginning of World War III. So we have to watch and pay attention, uh, brothers and sisters. Christ told us to watch. Because everything is not going to be just laid out for us so black and white. Everything, and we see that the prophecies are being fulfilled, but it's not exactly how we may have thought they were going to be fulfilled. So the fact that Syria, that Iran is already in Syria, and that there is bloodshed, and the people ha are leaving, and they're living in tent cities, and, you know, the, the land will be desolate pretty soon, that um, looks very... Um, suspicious and we have to pay attention to these things. Also we know that, um, that the war will start by the Euphrates in that area where Turkey and Syria meet. So that's something to look at as well. So that's uh, another article. Also there's an article about Matthew 16 and 25. Whoever shall save his life shall lose it. And I thought this was very interesting because I hear a lot of people speak about the people who um, obeyed the Most High and left Babylon 
and went to you know different parts of the Middle East and they said oh they're leaving they're running out of fear and they're leaving because they're trying to save their life and I just wanted to write this article because that is so far from the truth when we look at the scriptures and the um, Christ tell us that he is not of this world that Satan is ruling at this time that Yeshaya told many people was to sell or give your belongings away to the poor and follow me. When people came to Yeshaya and asked them, how is it that I can make it to the kingdom? He told them to sell everything you own and follow me. That has always been the um, criteria to make it into the kingdom. And so what was um, good for in those days and time of Yeshaya is definitely good for today and it will be the same criteria so brothers and sisters we must um not be deceived when people you know s switch and turn the script scriptures around and say things like oh you're running out of fear the most high commanded us to come out of um, babylon and christ has always um told us the way to the kingdom was to be able to walk away from your loved ones from um, the things that you own, the things that you thought that were precious to you, that house, that car, that furniture, you know, your job. If you can walk away from these things and follow him, you will live. Um, I'm just, I just want to go into Luke 18 and 22 just to give an example. It says, now when, when Yeshua heard these things, he said to him, Ye lackest thou one thing, all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So there's many examples where Christ um, have told different people to give away or sell your things and, and follow me. So we must um, take a look at that and not be um, deceived by different doctrines that's telling you to stay in a, a land that um, the Most High hates. He said he despised Babylon. So why would you even want to be in a place where the Most High despise? So um, that's um, another article. I also wrote an article about um, did you receive the memo? And which also talks about um, coming out of Babylon. Because we know that the Most High Spirit was poured out and a, a lot of us woke up to the truth and know who we are and, and got a lot of understanding. So did you receive the memo? Because with that truth there is some action. We are to come out of Babylon and um, the spirit was poured out and we have to make a very serious decision on whether we're going to be obedient and follow the Most High or, or not. So did you receive the spiritual memo? You know and I again I see a lot of people teaching on YouTube and you know it very um, teachers who've been teaching for a long time, elders who've been studying for a long time, but yet they have not come to this understanding. And it, it takes you back into the time of Christ when he walked the earth, when there were great teachers and people who followed the Lord to the T. They too, you know, had great understanding and they were teachers, and yet they did not recognize Christ at the, when he was actually here and walking the earth. So the same um, as for that time is now, that there are people who know the word like the back of their hand, but they do not recognize the times that we are in. And it's just that the Most High did not give them the understanding, and it, we just have to accept that. Everybody is not um, waking up to the, to the truth, and it's amazing to be in this time when you have so many learned people, so many learned elders, and yet they can't, you know, see certain things. The Most High opens the eyes of those who He wants to open the eyes of. And the, the ones who are closed, He keeps them closed for whatever reason. So that's why it's important for us to, to dig deep, brothers and sisters, and get into the Word and, and go into the Scriptures, because the Most High said that He will want all of us to be saved. There's nobody that he's, that's more special than the other. He wants us all. So it's according to us and how much we ask and see and pray. We can't let um, ourselves get involved with, you know, these um, demonic spirits, the spirit of, you know, backbiting and fighting and fornicating and lying and stealing because these are the things that will keep you from um, getting the understanding and the truth. And as hard as it may 
you know, seem to some people, that's just the reality of it. So, of course, he said he would want all of us to be saved. But we know that there is only 144,000, the, the elect, that actually make it through. So, um, I just wanted to, um, I wrote, you know, an article on that one. The next article is about a young lady, um, Sister Kawita. She's 22 years old, and she started a company called Arise Israel Apparel. And I thought it was, you know, an awesome um, company and an awesome thing that she's doing. And I just wanted to bring some light, and hopefully that you can go and support the system. She has, um, she woke up to the truth in 2009, and she decided that she wanted to contribute to Israel coming to the kingdom and us coming together. So she put this company together. She uh, make all kind of men and women T-shirts, men and women sneakers, um, children's apparel tote bags, all with biblical based, um, you know, with a biblical base. It has um, scriptures and quotes, and it's really awesome. So I, I just wanted you to, you know, go to her website. I put the link in the um, description box. So check out her site. She has some really nice um, and um, new uh, apparel. So bless you, Sister Kawita. It's a wonderful job, and it's great to see our young people, you know, stepping up and, and being entrepreneurs for the kingdom and praise the Most High. Stay in prayer, and we are in a very um, difficult time. Um, I pray that brothers and sisters are um, coming out of America and um, getting prepared. So bless you. Praise Ahaya. See you. Hiya. Um,